hearing gives us pleasure, like listening to music. It enables us to better protect ourselves by letting us hear sounds that indicate the presence of potential dangers. But by far the most important aspect of our hearing is the ability it gives us to hear other people speak. It enables us to interact with other people, to listen, to learn, and to communicate easily. My name's Rob. I have a hearing deficiency up to 18%, of which I've been told 13% is accredited to uh, workplace environment noise. Our ability to hear can be affected by a number of things. Birth defects, exposure to certain illnesses and diseases, blows to the head, exposure to some hazardous substances, the ageing process, and of course by exposure to excessive amounts of noise. Now out of all these potential causes of hearing loss, the most common, and the one which we can most readily address, is the one resulting from exposure to noise, commonly referred to as noise-induced hearing loss. We're all constantly exposed to noise, most of which has no adverse effect on our hearing. But we're probably all familiar with a partial hearing loss, experienced after attending a noisy event or leaving a noisy place. It's difficult to hear and is often accompanied by a ringing or buzzing noise in the ears. With a temporary hearing loss, our hearing will gradually return to normal, usually within a few hours. Any temporary hearing loss should be regarded as a warning signal. Over the years, this hearing has got uh, gradually worse. Such things as my wife complaining about the TV is too loud, always asking other people to say again um, and, and repeat sentences. Finally, I took the plunge and had a test and uh, now we're hearing aids in both ears and it's probably the smartest move that I ever did. Today I uh, manage my hearing loss by telling people to speak up louder even though I wear hearing aids. Uh, the difficulties I have is in uh, an environment where there are a lot of people, say at a, at a function or a luncheon, uh, the background noise tends to uh, outdrown the people I'm speaking to in a close by environment. And quite often I've uh, not fully understood people, which has caused a bit of embarrassment. Noise-induced hearing loss is a major problem for New Zealanders and an increasing problem. Yet the solutions are simple. You can eliminate, isolate, minimise. Due to the nature of the workplace, it's not possible to eliminate the general noise on vessels and working with containers. You can isolate some of the noise sources, like lining vehicle cabs with absorbent materials that soak up the noise, or stop metal vibrating. We can minimise the impact of the noise source, or minimise the possible effects of the noise. Regularly tune and maintain the machinery so that it runs smoother. Turn machinery off during breaks. Place equipment down it. And most importantly, wear hearing protection at all times. Now earplugs have advantages and disadvantages, but one of the advantages is that they're small and easy to carry around. An example is this, which is on a neck band and means that you can put it around your neck put the earplugs in when you're working in a noisy area but then take them out when you're not and you still have them available to you. There are a huge variety also of small plugs, for example these little pods which some people find more comfortable to wear because they are relatively easy to put in with the handle. Some of them require squashing and this shows one of the perhaps disadvantages of earplugs in that if you have any dirt or grime on your hand you're going to put that on the earplug and then introduce it into your ear which can be a problem. One of the difficulties I have as the manager of um, Tarong Container Park is, is to get my staff to buy into personal safety especially in the use of hearing defenders, the disposable type that we have readily available or the permanent um, muff type. I try and explain to them the importance of uh, wearing ear defenders 
and use myself as an example because I have a hearing loss and wear two hearing aids and try and explain to them that it's not now that you'll notice the injury, it's later on in life. Especially to the young fellas who think they're six foot tall and bulletproof. My hearing loss today is, a, is, uh, is to the state that um, I, without my hearing aids in, uh, when the kids come visiting, uh, I, I have terrible trouble hearing what they're talking about, so okay, I put my hearing aids in. Noise-induced hearing loss can severely reduce your quality of life. Talking to friends and family becomes difficult. You could end up feeling isolated. Without the hearing aids in, I'm just living in a silent world. My family history, my father was deaf, he was a gunnery officer during the war, so at home all the TVs were loud, radios were loud, he spoke very loud. So right from when I was a young teenager I lived in a noisy environment and when I was at sea going into machinery spaces without ear protection and uh, probably what caused most of the damage was the firing of weapons gunnery shoots with the Navy on ranges and at sea. Most importantly, wear hearing protection at all times. Whatever the hearing protection, you must wear it all the time. In fact, studies have shown that taking the earmuffs off or the earplugs out, even for minutes at a time, means their effectiveness is so reduced, you might as well not be wearing them at all. What I've got here is a model of the ear. This is the outer ear, which is the portion of the, uh, that's on, that you can see on the side of the head, that's the pinna. And it directs the sound down into the ear canal, which is, if you can look down in here, is the, uh, it terminates or ends at the uh, eardrum, which is a little disc of tissue right down, quite deep down inside the ear, which uh, transfers all the sound into the inner ear, which is deep inside the temporal bone or deep inside the skull, and it contains the parts of the ear which are responsible for detecting sound. And in particular, this part of the ear which is called the cochlea. And the cochlea is like a little snail shell shaped structure and it contains about 20,000 sensory cells and each of those cells detects a different frequency of sound or a different pitch of sound. And it transfers those sounds and that, that information along the hearing nerve which then goes back up into the brain and eventually up to the cortex and enables us to hear. And the, the noise exposure damages this part it damages all of those little sensory cells inside the ear and the reason that it causes the hearing loss in certain frequencies so we can't hear high-pitched sounds is because the sensory cells or hair cells which are affected by noise exposure are mainly the ones in the bottom here or in the base of the cochlea and they detect only high-pitched sounds so the majority of damage that comes from noise exposure occurs to this part of the ear. The ear is in terms of its tolerance, the ear is not, it's, it's very tolerant to the sort of everyday sounds, uh, the sounds you might have at home, the sounds that are just basically in the environment, but it's not really tolerant, it's not designed to actually deal with really loud sounds that are more part of uh, industry and the more sort of urban lifestyle that we have today. And so as the sound gets above a certain threshold, and it's around about 85, 90 decibels, then its tolerance to, uh, to sound and tolerance to injury is really compromised, it's really reduced. Our world is not getting any quieter, but there are some simple steps you can take to help minimise any hearing loss. With a little planning, you can enjoy good hearing for many, many years. Because it does make life difficult when you can't hear softly spoken woman on the telephone or um, in a meeting. Um, you're always asking other people to repeat you, you need to look at them and try and lip read. Uh, it is embarrassing and, and uh, I wish now that um, if I could wind the clock back I would have been more careful with my hearing.